Welcome and welcome back to a new Unreal Engine video. Today we're taking a look at grinding, not the app, skateboarding. So, what do we need for it? Well, we just need a simple static mesh component here. So, the simple static mesh component, it has nothing in the event graph. It has two functions, start and stop, and it has a bunch of variables here associated with the grinding. So, let's get started in the, I'll go over the variables as we go through these. They're pretty self-explanatory. So, on the start grind, what we're going to do is the start of the grind, we are going to do a line trace. On the minus Z, that's a combination of both the grind height, which is the height that the actor is going to sit at. So that's this one here. And this is going to be set to 125 for the default character. And this trace distance, which is whatever your trace we want to do. That's that's up to you. And then, yeah, so whatever in the minus Z direction of our actor location, here are those other variables associated with the line trace. So if we have a hit, or if we don't have a hit, what we're going to we can go up to this secondary line here. So I'll, I'll go over this one first. So this is where we're gonna stop. So we're gonna send all of our like invalidations, falses, things like that, and we'll just send it to the stop just to make sure. So if we have a hit actor, right, we'll check for that spline component class. That's this other variable here. And so yeah, we're just gonna check to see does it have a spline, and that's it. And if it does, we're gonna find that location that's closest to us on so find location closest to world location. We'll find the find the point on the spline that's closest to this location, which will be our own actor's location. We'll check to see if it is within that distance using this snap buffer, which is kind of just a little bit of a this is a little bit of a, a variable you can play around with to, just to adjust this just the tracing. We'll set the is grinding, and then we'll branch we'll off the true line. False. We'll obviously send it to the invalidation off the true line. We'll we will set the actor location to this V interp constant, which is going to take this spline location plus, yeah, added to whatever the grind height is in the Z direction. So it'll be up on the rail by whatever this grind height is. I recommend it being above 100 or so. That seems okay for the character. I have it set at 125. So yeah, a simple V interp constant set actor location here on, then we'll run a sequence off of that. We'll simply say, we'll set the movement mode to flying if you have a character movement class. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. On the second pin here, we'll do a timer by event, and this is we're going to do a start grind, which is going to keep looping this function to keep doing the line traces, to keep checking to see if we're grinding, and at any point, if we do, it'll end up stopping, stopping it, right? So, and then the stop, as as you think, it does have this clear and invalidate for that update here, but it also has this character movement update, and it has this is grinding. So it uh, sets is grinding to false and then runs a sequence that will set the movement mode if you have a character movement class to walking. I find if you set this to falling, it doesn't quite work as well. It does if you, it's it's fine if you're on a separate key press, but if you do it off the jump key press, it's a little weird. Anyways, it's something to play around with. And then yeah, clear the update, clear and update the timer handle for the update. So this component will live on the first person character right here. This is where I've got it. And off the jump command, we'll simply write that start grind. And that's pretty much it. But now, if we hop in, we can see. Now, this is a very early system, so it may not be completely perfect, but we can see we hit space, we do the line trace, and if I try and move to the side, it'll pull us in. Oh, that was a good one. But yeah, if we move forward and backwards, and because we're flying, we have the we have the inertia. So yeah, if we have if we're flying, we have the inertia. It also works if you rotate your camera. So. If I'm like this, after adjusting the uh, editor here, we can see if I try and go d, uh, d and A, so D and A will go side to side, and I can even press W and S to go forward and back. So basically, it works in any any of the directions that you're facing, because and that's the only reason I'm really actually showing it off, because it works that way. And yeah, if we go to like a much bigger rail, we can go over here and we can just hop on, see it pulls us onto the rail, and we can just slowly... Now it is, if you try and join rails, it is a little choppy, especially at the joints if you're not moving fast enough. So if you're like moving slowly like this, you'll start to just start catching. Then you have to overcome it. Going uphill, there's a bit of a bug and it'll pull, push you uphill. And that's because of the set location and stuff like that. Uh, like I said, it, it might be a little bit of a bug, but this should get you get you started to where you need to go and in the direction that you're looking to go. No pun intended. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.